Yeah, okay, the Hobby King Pulse Jet Part 2. Yes, I do Part 2s. Who's saying otherwise? Anyway, um, I've taken it out. I've given it a quick blast, and it's obvious to me that the fuel jets are not big enough. Now, I'm going to show you in just a second here how the fuel jets are composed and what I have done to phones, goes 24 hours a day, um, what I have done to remedy the problem and then I'm going to take it outside and we're going to start it up and see whether I'm right. So here is the fuel metering assembly and there's two parts to this. If we remove this brass piece you'll see that it has a very very small hole in it. So we've got the holes in the actual vape or atomizer itself, one on each side and a very small hole in this brass piece. Now this is actually the fuel metering hole so these holes don't really matter too much. It doesn't matter how, what size they are. So we had two fuel metering or two spray bars with two different sets of holes of different sizes. So it's not really consequential. The real problem is in here. And what I'm thinking is happening is there's just not enough fuel getting through to this particular, well, through this particular setup. So this hole is too small. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the size of that hole. And how do you measure the size of a hole like that? Well, I'll show you. First thing you do is you buy a set of these really cheap but small drill bits from Hobby King. That's where I got mine. And they go in size from, what is it, 0.2 millimetres up to 1.5 millimetres. And they seem to go in roughly 0.1 millimetre steps. So you find one of the bits that will actually fit the hole. And I think in this case, this one will fit the hole. So if I line this up, it should be a nice tight fit in this hole here. There we go. You see that goes right through there. And that's a 0.9 millimetre drill bit. So the hole in this fuel metering tube is 0.9 millimeters and that's too small not enough fuels getting through there so we have to go to the next size up which is one millimeter so i'm going to drill that out to one millimeter and we'll try it again see what happens i've got the fuel tank here which i'll put some more fuel in we've got the high tension lead connected from the starter unit down there notice the engine is discolored because i have had it running it now runs with the modification i made to the little spray bar assembly. This is a bit loose. I should tighten that up first. But uh, now we'll get on and I'll show you how the pulse jet runs now that I've drilled out that fuel metering valve to one millimeter from the 0.9 millimeters it was. Now one thing you can do if your engine, if it's getting cold like it is today, is get a bit of heat into the body of the engine Starting these things in winter can be a real nightmare because they, the fuel just doesn't vaporize properly. Fuel comes in, hits the cold combustion chamber walls and just pulls in the bottom of the combustion chamber and you don't get the pops and bangs you need to get these motors going. So I'm going to heat up the body with this hot air gun. Probably not something you can do at the field, but in this case since we haven't got the engine tuned we've just opened up the fuel jets. Hopefully this will be enough to get it going by helping that fuel vaporize. You can use a gas torch as well if you want to, but don't overheat things too much. Just want it hot enough to vaporise the fuel as it comes in. Hopefully that'll be enough to get us going. Right, spark on. And see if we can get some sparking going on. The Hobby King Pulse Jet runs. Now the key things we've learned from this are, let me turn this off, that we needed a larger opening in the fuel valve, a fuel jet, to let more fuel get through into the motor. There simply wasn't enough before. It would burp and fart but it wouldn't run. Also, we have, my god, <laughs> you want to see this when I show you. Um, also, we had to have the con combustion chamber preheated, preheated so that we'd get some Vaporization of the fuel is quite cool here today. I got my shirt on, and so on a cold day, you don't necessarily get the amount of vaporization that you need. But I'm going to show you something about the quality of this engine. Oh, I am not impressed. Okay, let's go and have a look at that motor now. You saw it ran for a very short period of time, and I'm going to show you what has happened. I remember I spoke about the quality of the welds and that they were really awful and they'd been simply dressed down to. Uh, or ground down to make it look good now. I don't know if we can see on here, hopefully we can try and get the focus on it, but along here there is a, a 
crack. There's a hole in the motor here. There's a hole in this motor, look. They've ground so much out of the metal, it's just cracked here and made a hole. With that very, very short run, that's just absolutely awful. This motor is no good anymore um, because when you get a hole like that, you get air going in and out, you lose the resonance associated with the cycle that these engines run on. That is absolutely appalling. My God, what a piece of crap. I have to say, it's a big split there. Because what's happened is, the, met, the base metal is thick enough, but where they've welded it, they've just ground it back so much to make it look good, that they've gone almost through the metal, and then of course, as soon as we have the engine running, holes appear, cracks and holes appear. As I said, the welding on this motor is just the worst I have ever seen. Uh, dressed up with a bit of grinding and polishing. Oh man, that is crap. So there you go, was the fuel jet hole being too small was the problem with my Hobby King Pulse Jet. Now both of the fuel assemblies that I got, both the original and the replacement, had the same 0.9mm hole through them and it had to be 1mm to make the damn engine run. But as I just showed you, oh the quality is terrible. In my review on RC Model Reviews I pointed out that these were terrible, terrible welding jobs that had been dressed up by grinding them down and what they've obviously done here is They've ground them down so much, it's paper, paper thin. So as soon as I got the engine running, it blew a crack in it and blew bits out of the thing because it's only thousandth of an inch thick, the stainless steel, because it's been ground right back and polished to make it look nice, but honestly, absolute crap. So what I'm going to have to do now is repair the motor. And it'll probably be, I'll have to, I've got a new TIG welder because my other one I haven't repaired it yet, so I'm gonna have to break out my new TIG welder, set it up, and do some very, very, very careful welding on that ultra paper thin stainless steel. A good test of my welding skills, trust me. Um, so I'm gonna have to fix up that crack. But hey, we've got the engine running. And if you you see also that I had to preheat the combustion chamber, it's cold here today, I've got my shirt on. It's supposed to be summer, what the hell's going on? Um, but if you don't have a nice warm combustion chamber, then the, the gasoline, the petrol that goes into the motor won't properly vaporize and you won't get ignition. Also, the position of the fuel jet, if it's pointing straight at the spark plug, you get a better ignition, I've discovered there, it gets it more likely to start. So I had to tweak around things, so have your air tube pointing straight at the spark plug as it goes into the Venturi, drill your fuel jet out to one millimeter from the 0.9 millimeters, and you can do it, those drills from Hobby King are cheap as beans, just be very careful, use some lube, it's brass, so there's always the risk of breaking a drill, but if you don't do things carefully. Use a drill press if you can. I didn't actually film me doing that, but I may film that if people want to see how I did it. I put my little fuel jet in a vise on a drill press, and I was very careful just picking with lots of cutting oil as I drilled into the brass so it wouldn't grab. That solves the problem, but the problem of the welding, well, you know, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that except fix it when it breaks. Now, I've had pulse jet engines I've built myself, and they've run for tens of hours. And I've never had a failure like that because when I weld up a pulse jet, I just don't bother grinding back the weld. The weld is, yeah, there's a little bead there and you can see it. And I could grind it back to make it look really nice, but you always run the risk that if you do that, you're going to weaken the weld and it's going to pop or crack when you run the engine. So really, you know, it doesn't, it's not worth doing because once you've run these engines for a minute or two, they go all black and horrible anyway. So it's not like you, you know, you, you're doing anything by hiding the, the weld bead. In fact, here's a weld bead I've done on one of my other engines. This is the one of my Tame Cat. And as you can see, it's not the prettiest weld bead in the world, but we're dealing with half millimeter stainless steel. So it's not that easy to weld, but this engine has done tens of hours of running and it is never cracked, still holding up well. So there you go. Now, so if you've got a, one of these Hobby King Pulse Jet engines and you can't get it to start, then I would recommend that you try drilling out that fuel jet. It's obvious there just wasn't enough fuel getting through to run it. And that's on gasoline, on petrol. If you were trying to run it on methanol, forget it. Methanol requires far more fuel. You'd have to drill that out probably to 1.2 millimeters to get enough fuel through there to, to actually make that motor run. So if your Hobby King Pulse Jet's just burping and farting and it won't run, there's your problem. I am almost guarantee it. Um, and if you're in the northern hemisphere, of course, you're going to have some problems because it's really cold up there now. So you might have to use a, a propane torch on this combustion chamber if you want to start it up just to warm that chamber up so the fuel will vaporize when it goes in. There you go. If you've got questions, comments, anything like that, put them on the bottom of this video. I'll try and answer them. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working on the mini talon. I'm going to make it an aluminium, little aluminium plate that the engine will bolt to and that will then be mounted on the mini talon. And I've got some insulating blanket that will go under there just so that when the aluminium heats up, it's not going to melt the foam because people are saying, you're going to melt the foam and it's going to fall out of the sky. Well, I don't think I will. And I'll show you how I'm getting around that. And I'm going to try and use very basic materials that you can get anywhere. So if you want to build your own pulse jet mini talon, 
then you can just follow in my footsteps. So there will be part three and four, who knows? Oh, like people will be saying, oh, there'll never be a part two, this doesn't exist and you never get part three. Well, just watch and learn people. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there you go, if you've got essay questions, do the thing. In the meantime, I will now get on with welding up the, in fact, I'll probably do a video setting up my new TIG welder and perhaps I'll just video how I weld up the engine so I can embarrass myself by making a bodge of it. <laughs> there you go. Okay then, so much to do, so little time, and it's bloody cold and windy. Damn. Bye for now.